I think some people are just militantly monodirectional with their beliefs. But many, many others believe uh, what they believe pretty much automatically. Ergo, uh, which means we can easily claim uh, they don't even think about the cognitive structure of their own uh, uh, processes of believing. They just repeat it. It is either implicit, uh, tribalistic, uh, or both. For instance, many North America uh, people particularly believe uh, quite confusingly, of course, that uh, Jesus is God, meaning uh, Jesus is his own father and vice versa. They, which obviously makes no sense, but they don't even think about the nonsense making of it. They just go for it. So they process it that way, psychologically, with no inquiries whatsoever, not even doubts. They just accept it as a some kind of divine mystery or, or something. They could not even possibly comprehend, perhaps. And all of that is just fine. We can call these minds, with all due respect, but we can really call these minds non-thinkers. Now, when somebody or a group is somehow prepared to intervene and propose inquisitive questions to the non-thinkers, the results, the reaction, usually, that can get summoned and take place eventually, are sometimes a mix of curiosity and even stupor. So, for instance, something along the lines like, oh, wow, I never thought about that. Please tell me more. And now look, the sophistication of this. At that point, the interlocutor, the person proposing certain questions, who are prepared, somehow prepared with proposing inquiring questions, the interlocutors, the questioners, have merely two options. The option one, I will call it the serious thinking. This option consists in taking very, very seriously what they started and making the non-thinkers aware of their mechanical thought processes. Rather than just the beliefs those thought processes focus on. What all of this means, really. The interlocutors, the questioners, have to encourage them to analyze the very dynamics of their own psychological mechanisms, mechanisms instead of focusing on the subjects of those dynamics, such as in that case Jesus, God, or whatever the subjects of their beliefs are. So to repeat this, the questioner has to encourage the non-thinker to analyze the structure of the dynamics of it is or her own psychological mechanisms in the first place, instead of making the non-thinker focus on the subjects of those dynamics and mechanisms, mechanisms, whatever the, the, the subjects of uh, their beliefs are all about. This is option one, which I call serio serious thinking. Option, option two instead, I will call it the deceivers. And this is very tricky. The second option, indeed, is to install a self-doubt in the non-thinker, in the non-thinker's mind, a self-doubt based on their own ignorance and lack of logicality and lack of thinking skills regarding their own system of beliefs and epistemic acceptances. So what all of this means, really? The second option, often erroneously undertaken by critical thinking-based approaches, and the joke parts of metacognition, or the so-called strict epistemology and so on, whether it is done intentionally, and as bad, that would be very bad, or not, consists in uh, the interlocutors, the questioners, actually inserting self-doubt and taking ownership of the non-thinker's haha moment. And that's something that substantially resembles and reminds me of the more or less 
more or less a form of a programmed manipulation, sort of, that actually takes advantage and actually abuses of people's meta-ignorance, as it as is, is called. Meta-ignorance is when one does not even know how ignorant they are. Rather than stimulating them to engage the use of their brain in order to produce some rational procedures and critical intelligence and therefore real thinking. So in other words, asking questions does not necessarily make people think. And I repeat this, asking questions does not necessarily make people think. Often it's just asking questions. So the second option the deceivers, as I call it, is not just sneaking and manipulative. It is also uh, what turns the non-thinkers into mere uh, parrots. Eventually they are capable of camouflaging themselves as uh, wannabe critical thinkers, perhaps, or uh, even worse, free thinkers, which is a non-existing cognitive reality, or eventually people who realized the fallaciousness of their former beliefs, and now, magically, they have emancipated themselves, etc. But in many cases, the truth is that they have become merely parrots, they repeat, They're still captured in the rat of non-thinking, just as they eventually look that way. They're just caged, and they caged the dynamics of their beliefs, but the mechanism is still the same. Well, I experienced that myself, and I also experienced how futile it is to undertake and try any kind of attempt aimed at making non-thinkers think. The viewpoint I have now is that, sadly enough, I should have let all those non-thinkers I met just go on their own ways, including a former partner, by the way, instead of contributing to the consolidation of their, uh, I'm sorry, parroting. So to summarize all this, we can all agree, and as we should, about mathematics. But the human thinking is not mathematical. It is put together by thought processes, and thought processes are so often confused, second-hand, of course, conditioned and limited by our own cognitive nature. And when the human thinking is, n is also n not non-thinking, then the inevitable outcome of that uh, is mere everlasting conflict. It is a truth. Mathematics is another truth. Mathematical truth and psychological truth do not match. So if a philosophy attempts to make uh, them match, uh, well, then that philosophy is a joke. Just like if critical thinking attempts to make them match, that is a joke too, and so is metacognition. Language, meanings, and the psychological pictures we form in our minds and verbalize are also put together by thought processes, not by mathematics. So, the moral of this is failing to comprehend the complexity of all this makes all efforts, such as critical thinking, metacognition, and logic itself, lead astray as mere pretentious but futile jokes.